So just a quick video today. I want to see if we can figure out whether or not an object is iterable. So any kind of object, if we pass it to our function, we want to be able to get a true or false back telling us if something is iterable. Now, if you don't know what iterable versus enumerable is, I have a link at the top there to a video that I did on the difference between the two. But a quick little short summary is something like an array or a string is iterable because I can say, this is the first letter, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth. In an array, you know what order the elements are in. Objects by default are not iterable, but they can have an iterator created and added to them. So if you say, I want to use a for of loop on my array, that's going to work. If I want to use a for of loop on my object, the object has to have an iterator. So the object knows which property is supposed to come first and second and third and so on. So let's do our test. I have a bunch of variables here that I'm going to use as tests. I've got two primitives. I've got a null and then an object and an array. So we're going to pass these down inside of here. We're going to call console.log. I've defined my shortcut to that down here. And I'm going to call is iterable. And I'm going to pass one of these things in there. So let's start with the null, the one that we know is going to fail. Now inside this function, just to be careful so that the rest of our code we know is going to work, first thing we're going to do is check to see if the value is null or undefined. To do that test, the easiest way is with the, the new operator, the nullish coalescing operator. So you can do this. You can say, here's my variable, two question marks, that's the nullish coalescing operator, and that tests to see if obj is null or undefined. And if it is true, it's going to give us this alternate value. So the alternate, like that. So let's just do a test, make sure that works. When we run this, there we go. I'm getting this value because we're passing a null in here. Same thing, if it was undefined that we passed in, we would also see this. Well, I don't want to return that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to overwrite whatever's in obj with, not a string saying alternate, but I'm going to actually create an object, an error object. There we are. So that will be what we pass back. So we can test to see if the obj is now an error. So we'll use, you yeah, know, let's do uh, instance of. That's what I'm trying to think of. Instance of. So if obj is now basically an error object, we'll throw it. We'll throw the error. So that's going to reject and we'll get our error showing up in here. If we run this again, sure enough, there is our error like this. And we can do try catch or if this is in a promise, we can have the catch method at the end, handle that error however we want. But we now have a test to see if something is null or undefined. It's going to exit from the function if that is the case. Well, we don't want to do that. We're just sort of eliminating those as possibilities. Now we're going to go down and say, what about my array? This should be something that is iterable. So we're going to do a test. We're going to say that we're going to return a Boolean here. And there's two things we're going to test. First of all, I want to know if there is an iterator object inside of whatever we're passing in. So in this case, my array. And there isn't something that is called iterator like this. To do that, if they built that into array or object or string, if there was something called iterator, it would mean that nobody would ever be able to use that as a property on an array object. So they had to come up with something that was going to be absolutely unique. And that is exactly the purpose of symbols. So if I do this, I'm saying, there is something inside of object that is equivalent to symbol.iterator. So iterator is a property on the symbol object and it represents the unique method inside of object that is an iterator. So once we have that, then we can check to see, okay, the thing inside of objs called symbol iterator, is that actually a function? So that's our final test right here. So we'll say type of obj symbol operator, symbol iterator rather, 
is equal to function. So I'll put this on two lines so it's easier to read. We can see the whole thing. This is what we're returning. And scroll this over so we see the whole thing. There we go. So we're testing to see if this exists inside the object, and if it does, is this thing a function? So we should get a true for my array. And there it is. How about for my obj? Let's, let's just test all these things. So my array, my object. Now this object is just a object literal. There is no iterator inside of it. So that will return false, or it should return false for us. A number, we're going to find out if it has one. We're going to find out if our string has one. And then down at the very bottom, we already tested it, my null. We know that that one is not going to give us anything back. So let's try running this now with those four. True, undefined, undefined, true. So we're getting down to our final little test here. We're getting undefined when it doesn't have it rather than a true or false. So we're going to change this return statement to an if statement. And we're going to say if both of these things are true, we will return true. Else return false. And that should give us what we're looking for. So now we have a test that's going to filter out nulls and undefines. And if the object is actually iterable, we'll get a true. And if it's not, we will get a false. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.